So we are one hour before the start of the exhibition, which is called Re Coniculum. So this is a collaborative show between Daniel Gianfranceschi yeah. and Skinosh, aka me. Uh, we've been working over a year on this joint project. Really excited to show you the pieces. So maybe to start things off, material is really in focus for both of us yeah. when we work individually. So we really wanted this to be also the focus for our joint show. Okay. If you know Skinosh, I mainly use leather, of course, but also experiment with other materials such as rubber, all kinds of things, aging materials and all that exactly. kind of stuff. And Dan really works also with more industrial, experimental materials such as industrial foam, and steel rods and resins, like all, all things that really normally aren't associated with sculptural arts or visual art. So it was really important for us to also show that in the pieces that exactly. we're showing you today. But first we want to talk about the concept, right? So re curriculum is basically a Latin word. Exactly. And so the word curriculum basically means burrow, which is in German the Bau, which is really based on Kafka's book, the Bau. Exactly. So in English, again, the burrow. We sort of interpreted this in two ways. So we have the physical burrow. Which was like the studio where we always met and we dug deep. Each piece, I think, has a certain own story to tell. So each of us has a separate studio, right? Which is our personal burrow, basically. Exactly. The physical burrow. The physical, yeah. It's really important to note that for us, it's sort of a hallowed ground or like a sacred space for us. That's it's where you feel at ease and it's where I think you, you really can shut down your brain from the everyday life, which happens almost paradoxically in contrast to everything that's happening here behind us, for example. Exactly, yes. So every time we want to escape the real world, quote unquote, we basically escape towards our separate burrows. Exactly. Burrow is the, is the word, the translation is cuniculum, right? And we mentioned, we, we call it re cuniculum because our burrows basically crossed when we did the, our first show together. Exactly. And we call it re because we think, or we hope that we will work together in, in the future as well. Exactly. So our burrows will basically and, cross. And it's almost like, I think the title is also to be read as almost like a promise to ourselves exactly. and but also to maybe the viewer or in this case the other person working. It's not the last time that something like this will happen and it doesn't mean that just because the pieces are now exhibited it's almost like a dead end, you know? Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 more, it's more of a, of a start of exactly. a journey. Exactly. And, and what I also wanted to talk about was um, because you mentioned the physical burrow, I think the psychological or let's call it mental burrow. That's is the also second part. So we have the physical exactly. and the mental. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's also a very important part of this of this collaboration, but also in general of our working method. Because I think like Kafka's book or Kafka's novel in this sense, the burrow that he describes and that we somewhat resonate with is a space that is not delineated between space and time and it, it may be a physical space but it may also just be a, a state of mind and it may just be um, a feeling, a mood, let's call it, to which one grabs onto and um, that leaves the artist or the artists in this sense wanting more and always revisiting this sort of mindset because you always get back to this borrow and that's yes, yeah. where again the, the prefix re cuniculum comes in place um, where we hope and we think that this won't be the last time that we exhibit together, that we show something to together but that we work together also maybe in other mediums. So that's enough of the concept, right? So now we want to talk about the individual pieces. All right, so the first piece that we wanted to show you is called The Rupture. This was one of the many works that really changed in time, I think. Everything that you will see from now on really didn't look like this when we, when we first stepped into the studio and we're like, okay, this is the final design, but well, it wasn't. So when I, when I said we were working on this for a year, I literally meant for a year. Yeah. And we started with most of the pieces and then over time we had so many deep discussions, like personal discussions as yeah. well. 
and all of those pieces like really reflected and changed based on those discussions. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And I think this may be most literal interpretation of the word rupture, but also the feeling that it may evoke. Um, so literally, the leather straps and the wooden frame, let's call it, which actually was part of the frame, almost stepping out of it, creating a three-dimensional work in itself, but also of metaphorically speaking, and I think we're going to say that a lot, <laughs> because I think most of the works have a lot of deeper meanings that may not be visually visible, if Absolutely. that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and in this case, I think it's the most little representation of something breaking out of something else that may be maybe a positive thing maybe a negative thing maybe even an event like this exhibition that came from our discussions and our let's call it intertwining while working so i'm holding here piece number two which is called the face of another so as you can tell this is a mask that we did took a lot of time i think it's the piece with the most intricate work, a yeah. lot of details. Um, in terms of materials, so we basically used two different ostrich leathers. So as you know, ostrich leather is an exotic leather, which is kind of difficult to work with. This is, I think, the perfect representation of one of our basic principles. So yeah. we have ostrich leather, which is really like a posh leather that is used for really expensive pieces that the high-end brands use. But then we thought, okay, we actually appreciate the reverse side of that exactly. more, so the non-posh side. So it's obviously the same material, costs the same amount, but it looks sort of grotesque. Exactly. And nobody knows what you're wearing, right? And that's one of the concepts that we absolutely believe in also when it comes to clothing and fashion in absolutely. general. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's the main material that we use. So we have black ostrich and we have gray ostrich. But then we also have horse hair here in the middle, which really ties the whole mask together. And then we have animal bones, different kind of kale stitching, rubber coating, lining material, so all kinds of different materials. Exactly. And I think here, like with almost every other work, I think we're going to say that a lot. The, the title is quite interesting because The Face of Another is uh, a book um, title by Kobo Abe, which talks about this man who who basically had an incident where his whole face basically imploded and now needs to walk around with bandages on his head. And he, he almost wants to create a mask for himself. And in doing so, he realizes that he, he basically rebuilt his old face. So a almost useless mask that begs almost the question of, okay, how do I fit in with reality? How do I behave when meeting other people? Do I wear a mask? It's, I, I think it's something people say, you know, like uh, I'm wearing a mask when doing so and so, when you actually feel totally different, but you may be saying something completely normal and completely cordial because of certain circumstances. Yeah. And I think, I think for me personally, the perfect interpretation is that you cannot escape your true self. Exactly. You can change everything that you want, you can change your family, you can move to a different country, everything. But the baggage that you carry as a person always comes with you no matter what you do. Exactly. So your past is always a part of you no matter what you do. So that's my personal interpretation and my personal view, but I think it relates to a lot of people out there. So now we are at the section of the smaller works in the exhibition. These are all 30 centimeters by 40 centimeters. And I think these are some of the earlier works. That doesn't mean that they were finished earlier than others, like we said before. And um, so the title in order, as you will see them, are Amalgamation, The Angst in My Veins, and End of My Body. Um, I think here the interpretation is literal in the sense that it refers to the materials itself. Um, in itself that here we see burnt marks on the on the leather which were created using like a small flamethrower uh, which to us look like veins and I think reflect the whole the whole theme of my own body and in relation to the works and the sculpture works uh, most of all and um, in the sense or in the same sense amalgamation um, is a composite of 
multiple materials, also a leather tray that you made uh, originally for Skinners that we then uh, yeah, basically violated. <laughs> Behind you we see the last work, which is uh, End of My Body. I'm not someone who chooses favorites in his own work because I think I think that's almost selfish in a way and, and it doesn't seem right, but I tend to gravitate the most towards this piece maybe because it was the first piece that I or well actually we made together. It it basically came about because of the material and because of the interplay between the ostrich leather again and hot glue and um, animal bones for example which we then added like in the mask um, a um, horse hair um, apparatus and what i personally love about this piece is the ostrich leather is used on both sides right so you have the regular side as well as the flesh side so you see both sides of the animal basically Right, the next piece that we wanted to show you is called the Reaper. So this also happened really organically. So the base of this piece is a very posh jewelry case. Right, so I used a double Riri zip, full metal zip. I also used reverse ostrich, which, which again is the same concept, where you use a very posh and expensive material, but then you don't show that it is very expensive because you use the flesh side. Nobody knows. Exactly. And it has this like very raw but also soft structure, which I personally really love. And I think to me, this is really the antithesis to, to a jewelry case, um, because it really isn't usable uh, in that sense. Also, I think the, the um, metal support, which is actually a lamp, if you believe it or not, but I think really works well as a sculpture standard. Um, really gives it another another dynamic. It um, it doesn't lie on anything like maybe a normal jewelry case would that you may lay on like a furniture piece or whatever. It sta it really stands in the room and has a presence. And um, I think in one way or another, I think it may even be usable if you were to cut off the foam part. Yeah. Um, but I think the the impossibility of using it is what interests me or us actually the most. So we're on to the next one. Um, this one is called Pale Horse. Uh, you may be familiar with the title uh, from the same Johnny Cash song, um, which really almost gave us like the last push we needed with this piece. Um, it's the same format as uh, Rupture, the first work we showed, um, 100 centimeters by 80 centimeters. And um, we used um, a material called Tyvek, which is a super sturdy material that almost feels like paper, but is, I would say, 100 times more stronger than paper, um, which I found... Fact, yeah, it is one of the strongest materials that is out there. It's windproof, exactly. And it's so weird because it really behaves like paper, so you can make creases and everything and fold it. Exactly. And it stays like it just is like regular paper, but it's impossible to rip by hand. Exactly. So that's a super interesting material. Exactly. And I think you, you can read a lot of it, a lot, a lot of into it, like in that sense, the material that almost stands for the representation of, I wouldn't call it emotions, but our mindset, let's say, um, and so on and so forth. And the really interesting part actually um, starts when you put a huge fucking light behind it. <laughs> the Tyvek material really has a super interesting structure, um, I would say, between the layers of fabric uh, that almost look like veins, uh, apropos the, the aforementioned work. And I think we're enamored with the the visual effect of it, like it, it almost sounds uh, so plain in comparison to other works, but we, we really fell in love with the sculptural element of it, that you can create almost like these these mountains of, of fabric, but also the on the plus side basically, that you get this hidden meaning um, when you put a huge fucking light behind it, and I think it works also very well when uh, you you uh, leave the lights out basically. Yeah. No, absolutely. And to be honest, we discovered this by accident. Yeah. The texture or the properties of this material. So I've had this in, in my studio for a while. I made prototypes with this because, because I thought it was such a different or interesting material that basically changes over time, like 
nothing else. Yeah. Right? Every time you wear it, you have different creases in it. So that's why we thought, okay, it makes kind of sense to put some creases in it and give it character. But then also we added different materials underneath that. Yeah. So we added construction foam, for example. Exactly. And this really gives, when you put a light behind this, but it gives it different shades of that light color. Exactly. And so this is really a piece that you can hang up on the wall with no light and then it's still a beautiful piece which is pretty plain, yeah. especially on a white wall, a yeah. white painting. I think this suits it really well. But then you also have the option to put a light under it or beneath it yeah. or behind it. And it really changes the whole dynamic. It also becomes like a city that lights up. So um, we're on to the last two pieces, or actually three pieces. Um, this one is called The Gutting and the bigger one um, is called Infiltrator. Here we worked with existing bags of yours um, that we then basically really turned inside out almost. Um, we added material on the inside to make it pop a little, a little bit and to make it more to, to, to make it have more structure. In this case, we added um, a fiberglass material or actually a gauze material um, that hangs down almost like a curtain to me, um, like a burnt out curtain. Here, another example where the studio almost burned down. And uh, on the big one, the interesting part, I think, is the multiple materials and the multiple sides of it that I think, like with the mask, really sparked our um, collaboration, I would say, because you had already worked on that a little bit. And then we basically continued to add and add and add. And to me, now that I see it hanging and that it's fully finished, I really see it as, I interpret it as the start of our collaboration and um, as an object that really holds something of each work in the exhibition. We have foam, we have leather, we have hot glue, we have thread, we have combustion even, and so many different things that really shouldn't work together, but in a paradoxical way work together, I would say. Absolutely. And I think those two pieces are really, they exemplify both of our works perfectly, I think. Yeah. So obviously in some works you have more of Dan's aspect and in some pieces you have more of my aspect. But I think in those it's really clear that those are existing yeah. skin notch bags with first of all the signature vintage military handle, right, which I use for the German military. And those are fully functional bags that we then basically looked at and said, okay, how can we transform this? Yeah. So this is the last piece that we're showing you today and this to me personally is the highlight of the show. Absolutely. This is called the cell block and we literally worked for one year on this piece. When we look at materials that we use, so we have a fully functional wings bag in a beautiful green color and so this takes like 10 days I would say for me to just make that bag. Yeah. And then if you continue with the materials we obviously have this big cell block here which is mainly concrete. We also have some construction foam in there and then it's painted with a mixture of leather dye and leather. Exactly. Before this work I really I really hadn't ever worked on something that was so physically demanding um, because it, it, it really has a weight to it and I think it, this was an idea that we both had for a very long time independently of knowing each other and then we wanted to dip like a bag in cement or uh, shoes in cement or whatever and one day we finally said fuck it let's do it i really didn't think it was gonna work i, I have to be honest yeah. and we really worked on it every time we saw each other regularly saying ah oh, something doesn't feel right let's put it this way let's add this let's remove that and it really took one year to, to get the final result. I don't even know what I can say more because I think this is the work that really yeah. speaks for itself the most. Yes, so this was the last piece that we wanted to show you. Hope you like all the pieces. Let us know down in the comments okay. which one is your favorite. We really would love to know. Also your interpretation I think would be really absolutely, interesting. Absolutely. We can discuss in the comments and we're open to suggestions and new interpretations. Absolutely. And that's the whole point, right? We don't, we don't force an interpretation on you. We have our own way of, look, of looking at things, but we obviously respect 
all of your opinions. Exactly, and I would say if you want to know more about the pieces or have some questions, want to inquire on something, let us know. Um, we're also going to be releasing a booklet um, with the same name of the exhibition and shows basically every work in high quality and has a press release on it. So if that's something that interests you, I think I think it will be a good addition. <laughs> all signs and number. Absolutely. If you're interested in any of those pieces, feel free to reach out. I think it's also important to note that Dan and I, we both work individually as well. Exactly. So I'll link Dan's Instagram down below. Please check it out, give him a follow, shoot him a message. He's always happy to talk, answer your questions, etc. And we have the first people waiting outside, so I think we are jumping to the party. Exactly. Now. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.